show? How many have watched that show? Yeah, a lot of us, yeah. Uh, it's funny, actually, my daughter, Renee, is in California right now, and she's traveling around with four different people. Uh, they're all like traveling medical nurses and stuff, and she's having a blast. She just moved down to San Diego. She was in uh, Seattle, and she said, ah, I don't like the weather here. Let's go down there. They're having a blast. It's, you know, and, and she's very, very close friends with these guys and uh, girls, and they're, they're all a bunch, and they, they just have a great time together. And so we're in Relationship Month. Uh, it's, it is absolutely my favorite uh, topic. I love talking about relationships. Uh, this week we're going to talk about friendship. That's why they're uh, singing that song. Next week, uh, Daniel Mananta and his wife, uh, uh, Viola, are going to be here. And uh, we're going to be talking about marriage. The week three, we have a panel of singles that will be talking about relationships as singles. And then parenting. Uh, is the last week. And so I really want to encourage you to come. And w- w- when today is about friendship, so it's kind of an easier one. I got the easy one. But next week, and then in the singles as well as parenting, we are not going to pull any punches. We are going to talk about subjects straight on, struggles, uh, uh, yeah, with all kinds of things in relationships. You know, relationships, you need them, right? Can I get an amen? Everyone needs relationships. We need relationships. Without them, life is kind of, you know. And that song we just sang about uh, with Jesus, he'll never leave us alone. That's one of the deepest thing about God, about Jesus. He said, I no longer what? I call you friends. No, don't call me master. Call me friend. He wants to be our friend, and he wants us to have friends. And uh, just a couple of foolish things, friends. Uh, don't let you do stupid things alone. <laughs> friends buy you lunch, but best friends eat your lunch. <laughs> and if Arnold was here, he would give me a big amen. I remember when Arnold and I, it, don't eat with Arnold. If Arnold's your friend, do not eat with him. Because, man, we were at the Chinese uh, thing, you know, and the, the, uh, we have the, ta- the spinning around on the table. And, and I went to reach out to get something. It was the last thing. And Arnold almost stabbed me with his fork. He's like, I, that's mine. You don't touch that thing. You know, we, we've become very good friends. Uh, friends pick us up when we fall. And if they can't pick us up, they lay down and they listen for a while. Uh, that's beautiful. Because that's what we need. We need friends. Now, I will be honest with you, and you, and, and you could say this. Some of you struggle to have intimacy and friendship. And part of the reason is because your friends have hurt you. Because really, friends will hurt you way more than enemies. Enemies, you know they're against you, and so you're fighting them. And if they win, you say they win. Even if someone rips you off and they're a stranger, you kind of can handle that. But if a friend, a deep friend hurts you, it's really piercing. And when that happens, sometimes what we do is we, we, we wall things off and we say we're never going to let anyone in anymore. But I'll tell you, if you're in that spot, you're in trouble because there is no way to understand love and, 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 and this intimacy of friendship and in, in any relationship. You will never experience it when you're closed. That's why Jesus showed us what really love was. I mean, he became basically naked, had nothing left, died on the cross for you and me because he want, well, I don't want to get into this too deep because I'm going to talk about it in about a month. But I was, I'll just share this thought and then you'll forget it and I'll share it again. Um, Jesus had everything. I mean, he was in hell. He had everything. I mean, he, he had everything. Except for one thing. And it was the one thing he wanted. Was he, he came down and he died so that he could inherit you. You know, we sang that song that he's our inheritance. I don't understand why he thinks he gets a good deal. <laughs> but he thinks that giving up all of heaven for you so he can be with you is a good deal. That's too mind-blowing for me. That's just too mind-blowing for me. That he loves me so much that he would give everything up. So today we want to talk about what it really means to like find joy in friendship. Since we're in this theme of joy, it's really about finding joy. And in the Bible, when you look, there is a relationship in the Bible that's probably one of the best examples 
of what friendship is all about. And it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 18. Uh, it's not just in 18, uh, but it's, a, it's the story about David and um, Jonathan. They were deep friends. They were really good friends. And uh, in, I'm just going to read a couple of the verses, but there's a lot more to be said. But I'll just share this because time is, you know, limited. In verse uh, 1, it says, After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. From that day, uh, from that day Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his home and family. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off his robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. In this, just these very three verses, uh, but there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot more. If you really want to study about what a true friend is all about, friendship, you want to read uh, uh, 1 Samuel 18 and, and onward about the story about Jonathan and David. And in, in, this, uh, in this thing, there's, there's, there's some qualities here, qualities that if you, if you have in friendship, you will find great joy. Now, here's the problem a lot of times when we deal with friendship is that you're waiting for someone to do it to you. But I'm not here to tell you what people should do to you. I'm here to tell you how you can bring great joy to your friends. And hopefully they turn around and do it to you. So you can't control people. You cannot control anyone. There's one person that you can control. And that's right here. You know, this week, i honest with you, um, you know, I kind of lost it. I'm, I, I get quite emotional. And sometimes I was just really frustrated. And I lost it. And, and, and like, you know, I lost my temper. It was wrong. It was absolutely wrong. I had to apologize. And, and, I, and, I, and I did. Uh, because it's just not the right thing to do. It's just wrong. But our friendship hopefully grew from that because of some of the things that I did to make sure that that was okay and, and make sure I was forgiven. By the way, when you're asking for forgiveness, I'm going to give you this. I've said this before. I'll help you. When you do something wrong or when someone does something wrong to you, let's say, let's say you do something wrong and you go to them. Let me just give you a very, you, 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 uh, you say you're, you ask for forgiveness and you say what you need forgiveness for. Do not make an excuse. I, there's no excuse for bad behavior. You can make an excuse, but that does not help you because you've got to let the blame kind of fall on you. So when you ask for forgiveness, say, I'm sorry for Blah, 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 blah. Don't say, I'm sorry for blah, 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 because I was in a bad mood, because I didn't get enough sleep, because I was in a... No, there's no because. Then, honestly, what I often do when I ask for forgiveness, because this is exactly what happened, I said, you know, please forgive me for that. And, and they said, yeah, it's okay. And I said, please forgive me. I need forgiveness. I don't need okay. I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. I don't need okay. I need forgiveness. It wasn't okay. It was wrong. Absolutely wrong. So, and I don't, I didn't say that, but I just said, please forgive me. And then they said it was okay. I said, so please forgive me. P forgive me, please. And then they said, you're forgiven. Ooh, I love to hear that. And so when someone's asking for forgiveness from you, don't say, that's okay. Ah, forget about it. Just say, you're forgiven. And then be done. Let it sit under the blood. Anyways, that's a freebie, um, but I'll probably go back to that in a minute. I want to talk about four qualities that will bring joy into your friendship that we see in this passage. First one is, David, it says that Jonathan loved David like himself, or uh, as himself. Joyful uh, friendships are built on unconditional love. I can't go around that one. I have to start there. You have to start there. Unconditional love. Over and over again, Jesus talks about this. He says what? Love your neighbor as yourself. He says, no greater love has a man than he lay down his life for his friend. Do unto others as you would have others 
do unto you. Meaning you, you want nice things done for you. We, you want to be treated well. Treat others well. This is all uh, this idea of unconditional love. I love what it says in John chapter 13. It says, just, uh, just before the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to his Father. Having loved his own uh, who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. To the very end. Now, I want you to be, I want you to notice here, if you know that passage, that's at the Last Supper. That's when Jesus washes the disciples' feet. He washes Judas' feet. He loved Jesus all the way, uh, Judas, all the way to the end. Jesus loved Judas all the way to the end. Even when he was betraying me, he said, a friend is going to betray me with a kiss. He never left his unconditional love towards even Judas. Now, let me say that that unconditional love is not, it doesn't mean uh, not correcting or challenging them when, when, when you think they're doing something wrong. That's not unconditional love. That's, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Unconditional love stays with the person even when they are making bad decisions. Even when they're making bad decisions. And, and I think I've shared this example one time, but I, I had a friend. Her name was Francine. She was friends with me and Carol. And Carol, uh, you know, we had decided to get married. And the, the, the day I kind of announced it, you know, Francine was there. And Francine grabs me and she brings me in the room. She was kind of a prophet, wonderful girl. I love her. And she said, she said, Donald, this is the wrong decision. This is wrong. She goes, you, are, you should not marry this girl. This is the wrong thing. And not because she liked me or anything. She had a boyfriend and all that. She just felt in God that it was the wrong thing. And I said, okay, you know, nice to know. Glad you're sharing. Glad you're being honest. She was being very honest. And so Carol and I went through and, you know, and it was the night before our wedding. And she was actually in like a uh, part of our wedding because she was just very good friends with us. And she, she grabbed me the night before. She'd bring me into the room. And she said, now Donald, tomorrow you're getting married. She said, you know I haven't agreed with this marriage. She said, but tomorrow when you say I do, I will be the first one over your house with a two by four in my hand if you change your mind after tomorrow. And she's still our friends today. She's been my friend through whatever she agreed or doesn't agree. Same thing with me, with her. If she's gone through things that I don't agree, we talk it out. But she never moved. She was always our friend. She stayed with us, even when she didn't agree. And she was probably some of the loudest amens during our wedding. Because she was with us. She wasn't against us, even if she didn't agree with a decision. Joy is brought into a relationship, into a friendship, when it's unconditional love that stays with you, or you stay with them, until the end, even if they're bad decisions. Even if they're bad decisions. Number two, it says, Jonathan made a covenant with David. Joy comes when friends make covenants with each other. What's a covenant? A covenant is an agreement of unconditional love. It says, you know what? I'm going to be with you no matter what. See, you have to understand the relationship. Jonathan... Yeah, if you know the story, Jonathan was in line with the throne. He was the one to take the king. He was going to be king. And yet he knew David was going to be the one to become king. But he said, you know what? I'm making a covenant with you. We are going to be friends forever. And we're not going to, I'm not going to move from that friendship. And I'm going to make a covenant. Now, when you make a covenant, even in a marriage, I want to, I want to be clear what that, how that works. When you make a covenant, you, this is how you do it. So, you know, Johnson and I are friends. I wouldn't say I made a covenant with him, but I'll, I'll make a covenant with him now, sure. I, I, I trust him that much, and we, we've, we're close enough. We're about that time. We're about ready. Um, but when I make a covenant with Johnson, I don't make, a, in a sense, I don't make a covenant with him. I say, God, I am making a covenant with you that I will be his friend no matter what. Lord, I, 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 I come before you and my covenant is I will have unconditional love towards him. That I will forgive him 
And hopefully he forgives me, but I, only my part is this way. And so when I break that covenant of, of abandoning him or, or not liking his decision and walking away or whatever it is, I'm not breaking my covenant with him. I'm breaking my covenant with God. Because, see, friendship and covenants all has to do with my integrity on my side. I can't, I can't control his integrity. I can't control his word. Hopefully he does the same thing. You know, that's kind of how it works. As a matter of fact, you know, you, you got that old triangle kind of thing. You know, God and, and the two. And what you want to do is you want everyone to win. You want to win with God through your word. And then as you win with God, you win with each other. And then you, your covenant, you're, you're, you're bound together. And I say, I'm going to be his friend. And I'm not going to leave that. He, when he's in trouble, I'll be there. When he needs my help, I'll help him. If he needs something, I'll give it to him. But I'm doing that because I say it to you, God, not because of who he is, because he's going to fail me. He's floored. He's, he's, he's like me. <laughs> you know, he's as messed up as me. So I can't depend on his actions or his integrity to make my covenant. I have to make it with God. So that's what Jonathan does here. He makes his covenant with God for, to David. And there's nothing more joyful as when you make big mistakes or you're in big trouble or you do something dumb and all of a sudden you get a text from a friend, a close friend, one who has a covenant with you says, hey, what's going on, man? I'll never forget that story. I, I've told it. Uh, his name was Tony. Uh, you know, Tony, yeah. <laughs> with a lot of, anyways, a lot of Italians where I used to live. And, uh, you know, Tony was a really good friend of mine. And I remember I, I, I was really, did a really stupid thing. Excuse my expression. But I really, you know, was just a big mistake, huge mistake. You know, I remember eating dinner with him and, and like, you know, we were having spaghetti, of course. And I waited, I absolutely waited until he put the meatball in his mouth. I waited for that. And he put the meatball in his mouth. I figured, okay, then he's not going to be able to like, he's going to have to take his time in responding, you know. And then I told him what I did. I told him what I did. It was a biggie. And, and, and I remember, look, I still see his face. He, he took the bite of that meatball. I told him what, not one thing changed in his expression. He just kept chewing that meatball. He said, okay, well, we'll deal with it. I'm with you. We'll walk through. Whew. Uh, you don't know how that brought joy to my heart to know that someone wasn't going to, someone, and he was like, you know, he was kind of like a pastor kind of guy, you know. And, and, and he didn't run away from me. He didn't, he didn't point his finger. He didn't say, I told you so. He didn't do any of that. He just said, okay. Let's walk through it. Whoo! That's the kind of friendships that we need to have. Covenants are a, an agreement of trust. It's, a, it's based upon one's word. You know, it doesn't say, if you do this, then I will do that. I had to correct one time, someone was getting married, and they, they were making a covenant to their the, the, the wife, and they said, if you, and I said, nope, out. That, that gets thrown away. There's no ifs. There's no ifs. There's no condition. And then when it's made with God this way towards someone, towards your friend, if it's made that way, that's how it remains pure because you're, when I say pure, you, you want to follow God. You want to do what's right with God's way. You want to do what's God's way. So you, it remains pure. That relationship can stay pure. That's how it works. That's why you can have, uh, you know, a, a guy can have a, a girl who's a friend, not a girlfriend, and, and they, can, they can be close. And that's why you make it with God so it stays pure. That's how you do it. I'll say this, that if you really want to have close friends and make, uh, boy, that, I, didn't, I didn't time it this way, but now it works perfectly. Um, if you really want to get close with someone and you really want to enter into like kind of that kind of relationship with someone, do some kind of adventure together, especially when it comes to ministry. 
You know, February, I'm sure if I said, February, who was, I, who's your, who, who'd you go with? Are you closer to them now than when you went, you know, before you went to Kalimantan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why do you think soldiers are so close to each other? Because they've been fighting the battles in the, in the, in the, in the you know, foxhole together. And, they, and they, like, they need each other. They desperately are holding on to each other to fight for their lives. That's why they become so close. Why? Because they're journeying together to do something. You know, you can have a close friend that you have coffee with, but say, let's go help someone and watch how close your friendship goes. That's why my friend, I have a guy, his name is Paul Wilcox. I, I'm proud to call him, I call him my brother, but he's closer than my brother. Him and I have done uh, all kinds of ministry together. He is my absolute closest friend. Absolute closest friend. I mean, I can't tell you how close I am. He, he's closer than my brothers, my real brothers. Because we've done so much together and we've been through so many trials together. And, we've, and he's never left me. He's never left me. And I've been stupid sometimes. Excuse the expression. I've, I've done dumb things and he's never left me. And it's made me never want to leave him either. That's how relationships are formed. If you want to have close relationships, go do something crazy together. Go, go on a trip to Kalimantan and start praying for people together. Or, or go help do something, you know. Because trust me, you will grow close if you do those kind of things. I have friends like that here in this community. Number three, joy fills friendship when you clothe each other. I love this about Jonathan. You might not understand what was going on here. It says Jonathan, you know, gave him, uh, David his robe, his tunic, his, right? <clears throat> Remember the position. Jonathan was basically a prince. He was hanging around the king's courts all the time because that was his dad. David was a shepherd. So Jonathan gave David clothes so that when he came before the king, he would be presented properly. Now, if your mind isn't like mine, it's not ticking away. Because once I realized that, I said to myself, wow. So what friends do is friends, so Horesh and I are friends. I want to clothe Horesh in a way so that when he comes before the king of kings, he's dressed properly. How do I do that? Grace. I pour grace upon him. I, I clothe him with grace. I clothe him with the truth. I clothe him with all the things that he needs so that when he comes before Jesus, he's looking fine and dandy like a piece of sugar candy. That's what friends do. So David was a shepherd, and Jonathan elevated his position. He elevated David's position so that he could come before the king. Friends elevate friends. You want joy? You want elevation? You, 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 now I'm not talking about elevation worship. We'll have that later. Um, you know, if you want to be elevated, you want a friend who's going to build you up. Going to make you feel like a king. Going to make you be clothed in things. And not just compliment you. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, anybody can get a compliment. But the times where you really need, you know, a special thing. My daughter, Rachel, is close to me. She's, she's one of my friends. And yesterday we were driving in the car and she said, how you doing, Dad? And, and I'll just be honest, I was kind of like a little down. I don't know why, I just was. Everybody has those days. I said, oh, I'm feeling a little down. I said, I'm okay, but I'm feeling a little down. And she's like really quiet. And I looked at her, I said, why are you quiet? She goes, because I'm trying to think of what would really encourage you right now. Now, of course, that's all I needed. Someone who wanted to elevate me. This is what joy will, joy will come into your relationship when you clothe someone, when you clothe them with grace. Not with, I told you so, you shouldn't have done that, pointing the finger, all of the judgments that come from people around you. Those aren't friends. Friends don't do that. Friends cover you in grace, mercy, and truth. Jonathan not only elevated him, but he, he, he covered him so that he could have honor. What does that verse say? Uh, love covers a multitude of sin. That's like honoring someone. It doesn't bring up, you know, it says what? Uh, love does not rejoice 
in, 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 uh, in, in the wrong, but it rejoices in the truth. I'll, I'll just say this and, and then we're, and I'll be uh, just about done. Find, when you have a friend, find the kingdom of God. Find the pearl inside them. Don't worry about all the dirt. I've said that before. Find the kingdom of God in them. Find the, the place. Like I said last week, find the faith in them. Find the thing that's going to cause them to grow and elevate. That's what friends, that's what we all need. Can I get a mean? That's what we need. Right? That's what we need. We don't need I told you so's and things like that. And finally, very simple truth. Uh, friends, uh, you know, it brings joy when you're not self-seeking. When you're not self-seeking. All right, I'm going to say something and then you know more about me and it's not the best thing. You can encourage me later. You can put grace on me later. But, you know, I can't say that when some people who I would call friends, but see, I'm probably not really their friend, not the way I should be. When they succeed, I don't rejoice. Inside my mind, got a little bit of judgment going. You know, am I the only one that does this? Am I the only one that has people that kind of like, you want to be their friends, but when they succeed in your mind, you're kind of like mad because how come it wasn't me or, or judging them? Friends, real friends, if you want to bring joy, friends don't do that. So as I share that, forgive me. Forgive me for being that way. It's wrong. Do you forgive me? <laughs> Just practice, practice, practice. But Jonathan, out of anyone, deserved the throne, rightfully. But he wasn't self-seeking. He had a friend. And you know what? When, well, he never got to see David uh, become king. He never got to see David become king because he died before that happened because Saul and Jonathan died together. And in 2 Samuel, uh, David says this after Jonathan dies. He says, How the mighty have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You are my dear friend. Yeah. When your friend dies, you're going to be sad. You'd be happy maybe that they're in heaven. You know, you'll be joyful for that. But you're sad because you lost someone who brought joy to your life. So I'm not telling you to look for friends like this. I'm actually telling you, be friends like this. Be friends who build other people up, who clothe them in grace, who, who, who be a people of unconditional love, who make a covenant with God and say, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to be their friend. I'm going to be there for them when they're in need. I'm going to give them what they need so that then when they come before the king, they're dressed properly. This is what will bring joy in friendships. So I'm going to ask that we just close our eyes right now. and I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to kind of uh, help you search your mind review your relationships your friends Father you gave us the perfect example of how to be a friend with someone who's faithful to the end never leaves or forsakes Lord help us to be that way and if you're in your mind or thinking of someone that you've you know maybe you were friends at one time and you broke that relationship has been broken whether it's you or them you can still take a step towards them to try to mend that relationship so I'm going to just pray for, for you as well Lord I thank you Lord God for friends Lord we all need friends Father help us to be these kind of people to others. And Father, I pray you give anyone here who, who is closed off from someone, 
I pray you give them courage and power and strength to take a step to try to mend that relationship. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.